I wanna set something straight here. You see, there's a big difference between something that increases your blood sugar or has a high glycemic load versus something that just triggers an insulin response. A lot of us think that they're unified, but the thing is they're two different processes entirely. You see, there are foods that we can eat that actually still elicit an insulin response. So let me explain how this works because I'm gonna talk mainly about whey protein. Because I have a lot of people asking me about whey protein all the time. Is it good to take? How does it work in the body? Is it safe? All these kind of things. And the thing is, I'm pretty neutral on whey protein. And it all depends on the quality and it all depends on the kind. But let me explain how this whole process works when it comes to insulin. Because that whey protein that you're consuming does in fact spike your insulin and it spikes it quite a bit. When we consume sugar, it raises our blood sugar naturally. Now our pancreas as a response to that says, I need to create insulin or produce insulin so that the sugar that is now floating around through the bloodstream can get utilized by the cell and go into the proper place. You see, for example, someone that has diabetes has that insulin resistance where their body really doesn't produce insulin well. So when they consume sugar, their blood sugar stays high because they have a lot of glucose floating around. Well, the thing is that insulin is just a response triggered by the glucose we can still have an insulin response happen from other foods. In fact, it happens from amino acids a lot. Protein in general is one of the most, what is called insulinogenic foods that you can possibly eat. And whey protein is absorbed so fast and the amino acids are released so quickly from that form of protein that the insulin spike is really, really high. Because the body still says, I need to release insulin so that these amino acids can get shuttled into where they need to go. So you're still having the same kind of response, you're just not loading your blood sugar, you're not loading your muscle glycogen. Now, you can take advantage of this, because if you're someone that's on like a low carb diet, for instance, ordinarily you would need the carbohydrates to shuttle the protein into the muscle cell a little bit better. But if you're eating a low carb diet, you finish your workout and you slam a whey protein shake, well, you're gonna get that spike in insulin that is gonna allow that protein to get shuttled into the muscle to recover it that much better. So here's a bonus that's actually pretty cool. In 2005, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition did a little study. They found that when you consume a whey protein shake shortly after eating a meal, you could lower your blood sugar dramatically from that meal. So for example, people that are diabetic that eat lunch and have a rise in blood sugar that ordinarily wouldn't decline because they're not getting the proper amount of insulin response to that glucose, if they have a protein shake with whey, it's gonna spike their insulin enough that it's gonna help that glucose that is in the bloodstream shuttle in even better. So if you're trying to control your blood sugar, having a little bit in the way of protein or a whey protein shake might not be a bad thing. The best advice that I can give you when you're shopping around for protein is get one that's high quality. Try to find one that's grass fed and try to get a whey protein isolate so that it's 90% or more protein and doesn't have a lot of these additives and fillers and other colorings and flavors and stuff like that. Well, that's all there is to it. I just wanted to clear that up and let you know there is a difference between blood glucose and insulin. As always, I'll see you in the next video with more tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your diet to achieve what you want to achieve. See you soon.